Hi everyone, it's Vicky here with a new art journal. Today I'm working on my moleskin uh, sketchbook and uh, first of all I'm going to use this uh, plastic plate just to draw a circle. I am planning to create a submarine window, a round window, so I just need uh, this uh, to have a rough idea of where everything is going to go. I am going to be using uh, Paper Artsy Chalk Paint today and you can see the colors I am using on the screen right now. So for my underwater scene I am going to be mixing two different colors. I am first starting with the lighter color and I am applying everything with a baby wipe. I also made sure that the baby wipe is not too wet otherwise I am going to peel off the paper. I am working directly on the paper, I haven't applied any gesso or anything, but that's just because I am using Paper Artsy acrylic paints. And uh, just because they have that chalk finish, you don't really need to prime your pages. But uh, depending on the acrylics that you are using, you may want to apply gesso before you start. Now I am uh, using the darker color and I am working only at the bottom of my page and I am also adding a little bit and applying it with my fingers. This is going to make it even darker. Since this is an underwater scene, I, oh, it's obviously darker at the bottom since the light is coming from the top. And remember that nothing has to be perfect, this is just an art journal. So now I am going to add a little bit of white, I am going to dilute it with water and with a thin brush I am going to make some splashes. The splashes always add more to an underwater scene, as if they are bubbles or something, and uh, to um, bring a even more texture on my uh, layout, I am going to do the exact same thing with the darker color that I have used previously. And I mainly add the splashes at the top. And now it's time to work a little bit on uh, the background. So for that I will be using uh, this stamp set. This comes from Stampendus and it is called Seashells. There is also matching dyes for that. And uh, the stamp set comes with this stencil, which I am going to be using to create the background on my underwater scene. So to do so, I am going to use my acrylic paints. And uh, you can see the colors of uh, the acrylic paints that I am going to be using on your screen right now. I am going to use a dark and a light uh, green. And uh, these are also chalk paint finish uh, acrylics by Paper Archie. So you can apply your uh, acrylic paints with different tools such as the sponge dabber or a brush dabber. I'm going to show you both ways. In any case, whatever uh, tool you use, you just dab and pick up just a little bit of paint, not too much, otherwise it's going to uh, sip under the stencil and you won't uh, get a nice result. So I'm just dabbing the paint there. And each time I am loading my brush or uh, my uh, sponge dabber with just a little bit of acrylic. And I am going to switch to the other tool so you can see that you get the exact same results. And you see that uh, first I am applying the lighter color and once everything is there I am then going to be using the darker color to create some shades. So here is the result. And now I am going to be mixing a little bit of the darker color. You can do it with a sponge. Or you can even use your fingers if you feel that you have more control with that. I am mainly adding a little bit at the bottom of uh, the stencil and uh, I do that just to make sure that nothing is very flat on my page and this is going to add even more texture and make it look more realistic. So I'm going to lift off uh, the stencil so you can see the result. And if you have any uh, places where uh, things went uh, really wrong, you can always wipe it off with a baby wipe. Uh, you can see that uh, the acrylic paint by Paper Artsy really wipes off your fingers quickly and easily just by using a baby wipe. With a thin brush and uh, a little bit of acrylic paint, I am going to fill in the gaps that you get while using the stencil.
And now I'm going to work on my focal points. So first I'm going to color a scrap piece of paper and I'm using cherry red and coral. I am going to apply both those colors on uh, this page and um, blend them directly on the page. So I'm starting with a lighter color and as I move down I am going to switch to the darker color. Now I am uh, make, going to make sure that I can stamp uh, two corals in this page and then I am going to use my dies, the matching dies and cut out both corals. So using the exact same process by mixing two different colors and uh, stamping uh, the image, I have created all the sea cells that you can see on page right now. I'm going to stick everything down by using my matte gel medium. And as I am sticking them down, I am trying to create clusters of interest on both pages. And I am also trying to keep a balance of uh, the different colors that I use throughout the page. So I am uh, introducing uh, red on both pages as well as orange and yellows. To create my ground, I'm going to tear off a piece of uh, this scrap paper and uh, I'm going to use it upside down and I'm going to use my Versamark ink and smooth it underneath. So I'm just going to secure this uh, handmade uh, stencil and uh, with my Versamark I am making sure that I cover up uh, the bottom of uh, my page. I have a set of embossing powders which is by Stampendus and they have beautiful colors to create um, anything that has to do with sea. I have so many ideas on how to use this set but uh, for today I will be using uh, the jar that is called Golden Sand and you will see that it gives a beautiful finish and it is so realistic. I think it's the perfect sand. So now I am applying at the bottom. I will use a soft brush to wipe off the excess and then I'm going to melt the, the embossing powder with my heat gun. There are some gaps that I want to fill in with my sand, so I will be using this uh, Versamark pen to apply Versamark ink where I want to and then again I am going to apply a little bit of uh, the embossing uh, powder. And here is a close-up look of the final result and I hope you can see the golden sparkles from the sand. I really really love this. So let's move on and uh, create the window now. For that I am going to be using this uh, scrapbook paper and uh, with the wood grain at the background and again I am going to use the same uh, plastic plate to draw my circle. I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the inside of that 
And when, uh, once I have uh, the cutouts, I'm going to again cut uh, the whole uh, paper in half. This way, when I am going to stick it down on my pages, I don't have uh, too much bulk on the fold. I hope you can understand now what I'm uh, trying to explain. So I am going to stick one side first and then stick the second one. Now I am again using my uh, matte medium to stick everything down as a glue. So I have my window there, all that's left to do is to make it look more realistic as if it's a real boat uh, round window. So I am going to color outside of the window in that area that I have already drawn with my black acrylic paints and then I am going to cover it up with gold. This is going to create a nice uh, rusted look. And um, I am also using the inside of uh, the cutout from that uh, scrapbook paper just uh, as a mask to make sure that I don't end up uh, messing up the C background. I am going to apply a thin layer of this gold as I don't want to cover up totally the black from the background. And as I'm doing that, just to let you all know that as always you can find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using just below the video in the description area as well as on my blog. I have also used Distress Ink with my sponge dabber and that's vintage photo to darken up my good scrapbooking paper. And I think that uh, blends in nicely with my main scene. And as always I am going to use my big brush markers to do some shading on my main image. And now it's time to bring in my white gel pen and add my highlights. And since you know how I love finishing touches, I will be using these metal brads all around my window to make it look more realistic. To mark where each brad is going to go, I have uh, cut out this template with my plastic plate again, fold it, and now I am marking where the fold, each fold is. I am going to make sure that uh, the brad is, will not end up on uh, the fold. And now with uh, a black marker, I'm just uh, making a note of where its brad is going to be. 
Now I am going to use this uh, poke tool and uh, this is why I don't like working back to back on my art journals. So now that I had this idea to poke uh, holes through this, I don't have a problem since I'm not, I'm never working back to back on my pages. And when I finish my art journal, I can always use uh, some matte medium or any type of glue to glue the pages together. I wanted to add a few little uh, fish on my scene, so I have uh, used this tiny little die from an older a die set by Simon Says Stamp, but you can really draw and cut out the fish on uh, your own if uh, you don't uh, happen to have this uh, die. So I have uh, cut them out from uh, this scrap paper that I have used to cut out the corals and I have glued them down again by using my matte medium gel. So now I am using my black pen to go around them and uh, draw some black lines and uh, again I'm going to use my white gel pen to add a touch of highlight on top of them so this is going to make uh, everything come together now you can call this done so all that's left to do is to stamp the quote and for this one I'm going with uh, a saying that I had from an older Simon Says stamp, uh, stamp set that uh, says I need vitamin C and that was the art journal for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of my art journal. And if you need more inspiration, here are two more art journal videos that I have created a while back. Thank you all for watching!